What up, what up? Welcome into another episode of Profit Picks. If you are new, we always start this show by being transparent. And uh, we didn't have a show yesterday. We haven't had a show since Friday. And um, I haven't been betting a whole lot of NBA over the weekend anyway. I will say I think I went one and one. So no harm, no foul. And I cannot wait. We got, what, five days left to get to the NBA playoffs. Kyle, good to be back with you. How's NBA been treating you? How you doing today? Uh, NBA's been okay. Um, overall, um, definitely down in the last few days, but my losses weren't weren't bad. Like came down to the wire and just was on the wrong end of the coin flipping a couple of them. <clears throat> also, my uh, my top bet the other night was Minnesota had the money line over your boys. That was nice. Well, you know, I'll say this too. I looked at the schedule before whatever the game before the Timberwolves game was for the Lakers, and I had them losing only one of the remaining games. And the Timberwolves was the one. So, well, it's about to be two. Oh, all right. Well, we'll have to talk about it then because I might feel a little bit differently. Question. Did the White Sox lose yesterday? Yes. Yeah, I had the under. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone on the show of, took the White Sox except me. I only asked because of this comment. I know Boofer like, likes to play around and sarcastic. <laughs> he says he always seems to wear the hat of the losing team from yesterday. It's it, <laughs> that, honestly, there is some truth to that, but it's completely. I just open it up and I have a whole sea of hats, and I just grab one that goes with whatever shirt I'm wearing. It's not Fair really enough. planned. Fair enough. Uh, appreciate you guys coming in the chat. Ray says, Hopefully, everyone had a profitable weekend. What up, S dot? You oh, know who S dot likes today. I'm surprised S dot showed up today. I sunned him in an NBA debate the other night. Bro, it was embarrassing for him. He was embarrassed. <laughs> he was but embarrassed. We'll see. we'll see if he can uh he can get his get back today. I know Heat are on the schedule and we will talk about it. Um let's see. Marcus says Skid says you and Dutch are at 130. Also, I don't know if it was a mistake. I wanted to bring it to your attention. Yeah, I'll go back in and check it out. Um does it say like right now? I, I can't look at it right now if it does. But yeah, it's supposed to right now. It's supposed to be uh, 1 p.m. Pacific. Oh, it does say 1.30 for the other one. It's It looks like you might have scheduled them both for 1.30 by accident. But you're live on the correct one. You're live on the one that says Kyle Kerms. All right, cool. So I, I'll go back and fix that later. But um, a lot of games to get through today. We are not going to talk about all 14 because it just don't have a whole lot of interest. A lot of these games don't mean anything. We prefer to talk about you know some of the ones that do. And soon, we won't have to worry about that anymore. Everybody will come with effort. Every game will matter. And um, I can't wait to get to that part of capping. So let's get to it. We'll go in rotation order. Um, they made fun. I, I got made fun of too, by the way, Kyle. You were the first person to say it to me. But uh, somebody else brought it to my attention. I think it was Dutch. He's like, well, why are you always saying these numbers? 501, 502. <laughs> well, I was when I asked, I was genuinely asking you because I'm from New Jersey where we bet on, on our phones. I'm from the new wave, the new school of betting right. where those right. numbers don't mean anything to us. <laughs> yeah, it used to be. I mean, it's, it's it's a little bit more relaxed now, but it used to be a point where they will not take your bet if you do not come to the window with those numbers. You come well, and was say, there a, is there a number for every bet, though? Like what if I wanted mm -hmm. to bet Sixers team total first half team total over or something? Crazy? There's a number. They That's want you to look it up. Wild. With all the player props and shit, how is there not thousands of numbers? There are. <laughs> so they're they're a little bit more relaxed now, but it, it did used to be like that. I remember my first time when I came to make a bet in Vegas, I came and said, I wanted this team, and they looked at me like I was stupid. It said, what is the number? So I just got in the habit of doing it. I guess I'm old school. 501, 502, Detroit, and Philly. Um, opened up minus 15 for Philadelphia. 15 and a half is the consensus. I feel like it moved up to 16 and came back down a little bit when Kate was that shoot around. Total has gone up about three and a half points to 223. And as far as the injury report, Kate game time, like I said, he was present at shoot around. For Philly, the whole starting five, except for Oubre, is game time decision tonight. What a game and to start with. <laughs> <laughs> I know this is a game a lot of people probably are not interested in, but I think it's a good betting opportunity, and I'll tell you why. Um, Sixers, I'll start off by saying it's their, what, I think it's their fourth game in six nights. It's first game at home after, you know, three-game road trip. And, you know, you, you, you can tell me if you feel differently, but in my mind, 
the six and, and the injury report kind of reflects this to me. The Sixers are more they care more about being healthy and going into the playoffs healthy versus coming in here and, and trying to beat Detroit by 20 points. So just looking at that, they are coming off of a double overtime game. It's just a lot of things lining up for like a situation to fade the Sixers. The Pistons, I want to say five of their last six games, they've stayed within this margin. They got the rest advantage with two days rest. And um, I just, I think we get the more effort for the full game from the Detroit side. So uh, the Sixers are a fade in this one for me. I like the Pistons plus 15 and a half. <laughs> you don't seem like you're interested or you like it. Absolutely not. I mean, I, I when we did, I did a live show this morning with Chris and we were talking and, and maybe I was thinking Philly first half, but I'm not, I'm not on the other side. So I'm not going to argue with you about it, but dude, the Pistons look bad. <laughs> they look rough, man. Um, no way. <laughs> No way. That's a no way for me. Well, do do you agree that the Sixers should care more about staying healthy than going hard these last few games? Yeah, I mean, I think there's truth to that, but but Philly's playing really well, and it's not just Embiid being back. Like that 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 whole unit is starting to to gel together at the right time, and they're defending the three point line well. They're hitting their outside shots. I think the Sixers with half pedal to the floor could cover this. Uh, uh, Best of luck to you. I'll root for you. How about that? I'll give you that. All right, I'll, I'll take that. You're not on the opposite side. No, um, I'm not. I'm not. That's good enough for me. Um, well, well, that's enough on this game. They, they, the chat is not liking what I'm saying. It says, "Stop it." <laughs> <laughs> before we started, like right before he hit go live, we were talking, and he was like, "What games do you want to go through?" And I named a couple, and he was like, "All right, we're gonna start with Pistons Sixers." I, I got a bad name. <laughs> I was like, "Did you say Pistons Sixers?" <laughs> i like the ugly ones man that's how that's how that's how i've been making money in the regular season so we'll see if we could do it again here today let's move over to a better game how about that we'll skip the next two this is a good game i don't think we'll have any complaints for this one celtics and bucks celtics opened as a two-point favorite hasn't moved too much through two and a half now total hasn't really moved at all injury report you have Horford and Porzingis, both game time decision. I have a feeling Porzingis is not going to be available today. For the Bucks, Middleton is game time. Let me see. He's probable. Both Pat Bev and Middleton are probable. Giannis is true game time decision. So I had an opinion here. I, I just felt like this. This line feels fishy to me. Like the Bucks have been absolutely pathetic lately. Um and the Celtics, they can beat anybody whenever they give effort. But do they really care right now? Like, they don't have anything to play for. They're ahead of the two seed by, by so much. And the Bucks, I know they want to get back on the right track. You know, if one plus one equals two, the Celtics are a smash spot in this game. But something just feels feels off to me. How do you feel about it, Kyle? Uh, basically the exact same. I, I think my exact words were Boston or pass. Um, I tried it. I took Bucks minus three and a half against the Knicks, knowing the whole world was going to take New York. And I thought it was a nice get right spot for the Bucks. And, and I tried to do the sharp move on with this Milwaukee team, and it bit me in the ass. It looked good for the first half. Um, but I don't know if you saw it, Ski. There was a clip going around Twitter. Um, it was basically a mashup of OG Ananobi's coverage on Giannis in that game. He clamped Giannis. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ananobi is serious shit. And he's back. So I expect the Knicks defense to shoot right back up into the top five and the Knicks are actually third in offensive rating in the last 10 games the Knicks shots are falling so uh, I it was it was a terrible bet basically the point was I bet I bet bucks minus three and a half it was a terrible bet and I have no interest in trying to do some shit like that again it would be Boston or pass but again just like you said uh, how do you like can, can you really put your money on Boston just Ever since that part of the season started a few weeks uh -huh. ago, when you're trying to guess who's motivated, that's when I stopped hitting at 65%. That's when shit started <laughs> going south for me. I'm having trouble betting who's going to be motivated. So these games where there's a question mark on motivation, I'm just trying to stay away from. That's a good way to do it. Um, it's getting to be like I, I'm kind of tired of having to think about that every day. Who actually wants to go out there and, and play today? I wish we could just – everybody carries every game. I'll say this. I'll give a shout-out to the WNBA because that never happens in WNBA. They play every single game extremely hard. 
And uh, I just wish the NBA was that way. But we'll we'll get it soon. Five more days of the regular season. So one last thing I'll say about this game is if both Porzingis and Horford are out, I mean, it's a lot of rim protection missing for the Celtics. And it's a lot of, you know, they still have a lot of shooting over there. Maybe we look towards the over. I That comment is crazy. Said ski at last call. I like the ugly one. <laughs> Both were. Yeah, some funny guys in the chat, man. <laughs> That's wild. Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess over. Uh, I guess. <laughs> All right, let's move, let's move it over. Yeah, last call, like the ugly ones. Hey, man. <laughs> I'll leave it alone. Never. I'm going to leave it alone. Um, This is a game. I know you'll be interested in, and SDOT will be interested in. So we at least have that. Opened up heat minus two and a half all the way up to four. Total coming down a little bit from 221 to 219 and a half. Let me look at who's available here. And for the heat, a few question marks. Um, Bam is probable. So is Jovic. Rozier is a true game time decision. Let's see. Kevin Love. So it's just everybody's probable. Looks like a lot of people will be available besides Duncan Robinson. And then we have Rozier questionable and usual suspects for Atlanta. So I know Atlanta's at the uh, the bottom there kind of, I think they're fighting with what Chicago, as far as home court for that playoff playing game and Miami, I did hear Spolster say that they're trying to make a push to their goal is to get, you know, to the sixth seed. So I'm curious, I'm going to pass it over to you. Are you, are you trusting the Heat to continue to make that push, or are you rolling with Atlanta? I'm on the Hawks here. I bought in at plus four. I didn't take the money line, though. It's one of my smaller bets. Um, there's just a couple. I, I don't like the way this the Heat match up with Atlanta on paper, but uh, for starters, I feel like everyone's kind of written the Hawks off as, as one of the scrub teams. They're in the play and fighting for playoff season. They're 6-4 and four in their last 10 games. They're 4-2 and two against the spread in their last six at home. The Hawks are playing solid basketball right now, and I feel like it's not really being recognized. They're still like getting treated as some a scrub team. I mean, think about this. The Hawks and Heat, right? Miami on the road in Atlanta. They're laying four points on the road. They're right next to each other in the standings. Uh, it, it, they're not that far apart. Um, and based on the way the Hawks are playing, I just I don't think what the Heat do best really apply in this game. Um, the Heat are excellent at defending the fast break. Hawks don't really run the fast break. The Heat elite at protecting the rim. Hawks don't really attack the rim. Uh, it's just all the things that make the Heat a really good team. Atlanta has no interest in even matching up with them there. Hawks have been hitting three-point shots. The Heat three-point defense has been just okay. Um, and the, the biggest weakness for this Hawks team all year has been defending the fast break. When they play these teams like the Pacers, they're just getting run out of the gym. Miami doesn't really push the tempo like that. So I just don't think this is a great matchup for the Heat. They got Dallas on deck tomorrow on ESPN. Um, I know technically this is a more important game than Dallas, so I don't know how much weight I really put into that. Um, but, yeah, I think uh, the value's on the Hawks here, catching the points. It's one of my smaller bets, but I am on the Hawks. I'll be honest. I, I've kind of said this, I think, throughout the year, but I don't really like laying points with the Heat. I prefer the Heat in spots where they're catching points or, or more like a pick em. I know four isn't too much. I also look at the spot here. Um, it is the Heat playing their fourth game in six nights. Like you said, they also play the Mavericks tomorrow. They're playing a Hawks team who has had two days off. Um, so they have that going for them. I guess I'll lean with you here. We'll go Hawks plus four. Sorry, yes, Dot. Looks like you're on your own island tonight. I'm surprised he came back to the chat after I brought up the uh, the 90s basketball sunning I gave him the other day in the chat. <laughs> I, I'm surprised he recovered from that. He was embarrassed. Like he says, Kyle, don't do it. Reconsider. <laughs> do some chart reading. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's move over to the next one. We have, I thought about this game. We have Knicks and Bulls. Opened up Knicks minus two. Four and a half looks like the consensus. There are some fives, though, so make sure you line shop depending which way you like. And the total, not really moving. It's come down one point. Looks like 212 and a half. As far as who's available, um, Bogdanovich, game time decision, but probable. 
looks like everybody's going to be about available for this next team tonight for the bulls you do have kobe white probable caruso game time and desumu questionable as well um Knicks with og great um Knicks without him i have not a whole lot of interest in backing so seeing him back and just knowing that you know they were on a little bit of a slide now they need to make a push to end the season i would look towards the Knicks. i think they're the better team they're clearly healthier um, I hate that I missed the minus two, but I think I'll still lean towards them minus five. Can you talk me off of Knicks minus five? I got the Knicks at four. Um, so I'm in on the Knicks too. Uh, I, I didn't like how when I first looked at it, my initial thought was everyone's going to be taking the Knicks here. Not that that, would, that scared me off. I still took them. Um, but there wasn't a single, with OG Adenobi on the floor, there wasn't a single avenue where I could find an advantage for the bulls in this game. <laughs> like I couldn't find one aspect of the basketball game where I thought the bulls had the edge. I, the Knicks should win the rebounding battle. They shoot better. Bulls can't defend the three point shot. They, they play better defense everywhere. There's there, I just couldn't find one aspect of the game that I liked for the bulls. So at a short number, like four, the Knicks dating back to last year have been a pretty reliable team to bet on the road too. So I, uh, yeah, I think New York is the play here. I bet it myself. So I'm, I'm in on the, the Knicks. All right, that one we can be quick and easy. It looks like everybody agrees. Consensus between the chat and the panel. I'm a little worried about that because it, it seems – but the thing is, if you really think about it, the line doesn't isn't look sketchy. I mean, that means on a neutral court, this would be eight and a half, nine. That sounds about right. So it's not like the line is sketchy or anything, but for some reason it's, it just feels too easy, and I might be just be overthinking it a little. I did bet it, so I'm in, but – I didn't bet this one yet, but I'm I'm in agreement. Jeff thinks it's an under game. I'll say this: seeds, seeds two through. Let's see here: seeds two through six are separated by two and a half games max. So, I mean, it is it is a lot to play for for these teams in that mix, and that would lead me towards the Knicks. Not that the Bulls don't have anything to play for. Uh, one game in front of the Hawks. It's just, I guess. Knicks have something to play for, and I trust them more. Uh, I'll lean towards the Knicks. We'll see if I can get to the window at the end of the day. Someone asked about the total, um, and this happens to be fresh in my head because we, when we talked about it this morning with Chris, so the Knicks are 7-1 to the over in their last eight, but with OG on the floor. Uh, mm -hmm. Oh, was that you that said that? That might have been you, or was that you or Chris that said that? Mm, I can't remember. I honestly had a, a crazy night last night. <laughs> so OG with OG on the floor, <laughs> the Knicks, they're like 3-14 and 14 to the under. So the Knicks have been cashing overs left and right, but OG Ananobi's back, and they were free money unders with them on the floor. So that's a kind of conflicting trends there. Something to think about. It is a low total. Um, maybe Bulls team total under. Let me just see something really quick here. So last, there's Chris in the chat. He just he just gave it. Let me pull that up. Let me get back here. Both teams are bottom ten in pace two last five games. There we go. Chris sixteen and three to the under with OG. Can they stay under the low total of 212 and a half? I wouldn't doubt it. And he, see, he's saying the same thing. Bulls team total would be the way to look here. And I think I can agree with that. I like that look there. Let's move it on over. There, this game I was I was interested in as well. I'm curious how you're gonna break it down. It opened magic minus one and a half. It's all the way up to three. And total has gone up what four, four and a half points to 215 and a half. Looks like France is game time decision and Isaac game time decision. Houston would be without Shangun and Tate. So my thought here was when I first saw this, I was like, the Magic should kill the Rockets. Like the Rockets have been eliminated from the playoffs. The Magic are a part of that mix that I said sees two through six separated by two and a half games. Um I think the Magic are the better team in general. Like, why did the line open at one and a half? That just, it felt like they're begging me to go take the Magic. And I don't like betting, you know, plays when I feel like they're begging me. So I stayed off, gun to my head. If I had to play it, it is the Magic. How do you feel about it? I bet the Magic. I absolutely hate it. Um, <clears throat> for, for the reasons you just said, I don't see... <clears throat> Man, the Rockets had that little run, right? Then they saw some good teams, and their season ended. They, when they lost that game to Golden State, their season ended. Um, they, 
That was that was it. And then they had one more game against Dallas. That was their rival, that in the in-state rivalry there. This team is, I mean, I don't see any reason to bet this team. I've been auto-fading the Rockets ever since the first Dallas game. I was like, guys, they played an easy schedule. Now they're going to start playing some good teams. And I've been auto-fading the Rockets since that day. And I don't see any reason to stop doing that. Um, yeah, the line stinks. The line screams that the sharp move is to take Houston in the points. But I don't, I don't care. I, I took Orlando. It's not my favorite bet of the night. In fact, I don't even like it. Uh, Franz Wagner being questionable is definitely something to think about. But, I mean, Orlando, they attack the rim. And without Shingun, the Rockets cannot protect the basket. It's just I don't see any avenue where the Rockets win this game. And not to mention Orlando could, if Boston beats Milwaukee, Orlando could be the two seed in the East tonight. So, I mean, they're playing good, for everything. Good point in the chat, too, that um, Orlando plays Milwaukee tomorrow. And Milwaukee is one game in front of uh, Orlando. So, and, and Paulo Banchero apparently said we want the two seed or something. Chris was talking about it. Apparently, he came out and said like we're going for that. So important, important couple of games. It's in a point spread range where they kind of just got to win the game. What do you think about you know some people in the chat are mentioning the Rockets' last home game? You think that makes them come to play? Is that why we're seeing this low of a line? You put anything to that? I mean, I, I wouldn't really know. Is there something to that? Not that I know. Of. I, I mean, I could understand, like, maybe teams want to show like up. senior night in college football or something? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Do they do that? <laughs> I'm not putting too much stock into it. I'll say that. But maybe, maybe they'll come to play for their fans tonight. That's the only thing they have to play for, in my opinion. So, Magic or Pass for this better. And Kyle does like those Magic. So, let's scan here. I don't know if we have too many more good games left. Um Oh, let's let's just mention this. We don't have to talk about it too much, but Denver and Minnesota, they play each other tomorrow, right? So it might not be the best spot to be laying double digits with either one of these teams tonight because they might not give max effort for the full game. Ready for this? Denver's record on the road in Utah, two and sixteen straight up in their last eighteen trips to Utah. Straight up. Two and sixteen straight up. They never win here. That's interesting. That's crazy, I mean, I, right? <laughs> Utah's team has changed a lot, but still. I, 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 someone said it on the live show, and I was like, get the fuck out of here. I literally went and checked. I was like, dude's right. <laughs> Two and 16. That's crazy. Wow. Yeah. Like, what's the reason that they can't play Utah? Wait, what did you say? In Utah or versus Utah? In Utah. In Utah. So on the road in Utah, Denver, two and 16 straight up in their last 18 trips there. And so I placed now. Keep in mind, this is extremely high risk. This is more for fun. I placed a parlay. Wizards money line, Jazz money line. 25 bucks to win 2500 because both Minnesota and Denver play tomorrow for the one seed. The biggest game of the season is tomorrow for both those teams. Denver never wins in Utah. Minnesota's been known to get caught napping at home in these easy games. Whatever. Uh, but if you're betting those games individually, I would take the points with either of the big dogs. But I, we don't have to spend any time talking about them. I made a lot of money, and I think you have too. Betting the Wizards on the road. Oh the man, Boofers. December, January. Yeah, they even money think about it. Are they on the road? Bet. <laughs> <laughs> Booper says ski skipping Wizards plus sixteen is more wild. <laughs> if I'm betting, I would absolutely be taking the dogs in in both of those games. Like Kyle said, uh, <laughs> they like that comment about the senior night. <laughs> All right. Um, We'll move over, go down a few. I think we have two more games that we'll talk about here today. Or I don't really, I don't really. Actually, I want your opinion. I want your opinion on this. No, 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 no. I don't want your opinion on that. (laughs) (laughs) Kings and Thunder. It doesn't have to be too, too long. I just know I've been really poor picking Kings games. You've been pretty good picking Kings games. Um, Kings have a lot to play for. Yeah, and I don't seem like they care. And I like the the matchup for the Kings. Oklahoma City's been really bad against a three point shot in the last 10 games. They're like 26th. And the reason I bring that up, I know not everyone likes these trends, but Sacramento on the season against top five three point defenses, two and 12 against the spread, against bottom five, eight and three against the spread. So the Kings suck against great three point defenses or above the break three point defenses. And they're great against bad ones. Oklahoma City, 26th in the last 10 games, struggling against the three-point mm-hmm. shot. But 
does SGA coming back give their perimeter defense a boost? And this is another one I didn't bet for the sole reason of trying to guess the motivation for Oklahoma City. Do they want to win games anymore? I, I, you know what I told you? Uh, I told you like a week or two ago. They're they're playing for seeds or like they don't they, they don't want to face certain teams. Is kind of what I've got. Like why was SGA Jalen Williams out all these games? That's I don't I don't think they wanted to win games. I you would think okay, so it seems like you're right. But you would think Oklahoma City, right? They did this rebuild. They got all these draft picks. They have this young team. Why would they not want the one seed? You know what that would do for that franchise to go into the playoffs with the one seed and season ticket sales next year? They were the one seed. I feel like that would have been an accomplishment for the for the organization to get the one seed. I don't know why you would bail on that personally. Well, everybody may not feel this way, but you know, if I was one of these teams, I would not want to go into my first series facing the Lakers or the Warriors. Um, unless you're the Nuggets, you don't really care who you I mean, face. do you want, but who do you want to play? You want to play the Suns right now? Like there's, there's I mean, no one in the, the West that you want to play. The Dallas the Kings and Pelicans look, look like very good matchups. I would, I would love to play either the Kings or Pelicans. Don't, don't disrespect the Kings like that. Not here. <laughs> <laughs> they, they get, you know what? I forgot to mention too. They're a little banged up. I mean, they already were missing Monk and, and Herder. Now Keegan Murray. Yeah. Game time decision tonight. I mean, how much how much firepower they got left over there? That's kind of how I'm thinking. So, if we knew we were getting a full effort from OKC, this would probably be an Oklahoma City spot. If we knew what we were getting, that's what makes it tough this time of time of the year. So, let's go down the list. We have Clippers and Suns, and geez, damn, I feel like an idiot now. I'll tell you, I was at. I was at the poker table uh, yesterday, and um, I was looking at the lines. I was like, Phoenix? I, I wanted Phoenix, like, over the Clippers. I was thinking just based on the standings, them trying to stay out the playing, et cetera, and just thinking I trust them more than I trust the Clippers. But the line has already moved four points. These teams play again tomorrow um, back in L.A. So, so looking at the standings really quick, Suns. I mean, they're tied with the Pelicans. It's six and seven, but they're tied. They're only a game and a half ahead of the nine seed. So they can very easily fall back into the play-in tournament. Do you think that's enough to get to the window with the Suns here? I actually tailed Chris on this one. He made a really good point uh, for, for Phoenix first half minus three and a half. And I only got it. I couldn't only get it at four, but I tailed it right on the show. I bet I, I, so I'm tailing Chris. He likes the Suns in the first half. Um I actually forget his Chris put your reasoning in the chat. It was it was really profound and it sold me, but I can't remember what it was. But I bet it. I took Sun's first half. Chris made it sound good. Yeah, um yeah, he did. Looking at it is a revenge spot. Um, I think they lost by double digits to this Clippers team last time they played. Suns in a little bit of a bounce back spot coming off a loss. Clippers are playing. <clears throat> sorry, excuse me. Clippers are playing their fourth game in six nights. So it should be a pretty tired, pretty tired Clippers team. Not sure how much effort we get. Um, I'm trying to look at some first half stats. I don't really see anything too crazy. Suns are 34, 23, and 1 in the first half as a favorite. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything too significant. I'm curious why Chris likes that first half specifically. Um, but I'll I'll lean that way. I think his Suns are past. And, um, I didn't get to the window quite yet. Yeah, if so. this was two months ago, this would be the spot you take the seven and a half. This would be the one the Suns w w lands on too. But I mean, this the the Suns right now. We're seeing them give effort on the defensive side of the ball. I mean, their their shots are falling at a crazy rate. Clippers can't play defense. It, it's it would have to be only Suns, I guess. So here we go. He just posted something. All right, let's get it up. Phoenix is a plus six. As far as margin wise, in the first half, after taking a loss since the All Star break. Meanwhile, Clippers are one and three straight up and against the spread as road dogs since the All Star break, only averaging 98 points per game without Kawhi and a fatigue. Paul George he thinks Phoenix responds here. I'm in agreement with that. You capper, he took the Suns full game. So we're all in agreement. Definitely seems like the Suns should get the job done. I'm just um, disappointed. I didn't get three and a half full game instead of seven and a half. So not sure if I'll, I'll get there at the ass end of the line. Last but not least, 
Warriors and Lakers. Lakers opened as a two-point favorite. Hasn't moved very much. Looks like two and a half. And the total, total has been going up from 232 and a half as high as 236 out there. The injury report, I did see, I think it was yesterday, LeBron, did he have flu-like symptoms, something like that? So I'm curious. He's game time. Anthony Davis is also game time. They continue to be without Vando and Christian Wood. For the Warriors, we have Gary Payton and Wiggins, both probable. Sark will be out. So this one, another one of those important games. Standings-wise, Lakers are one and a half games ahead of the Warriors. So if the Warriors want home court in the play-in, um, this is the game that they absolutely need to win. I'm going to kick it over to you, Kyle. I have a feeling you have some nonsense to spew right now. <laughs> uh, yeah, Golden <laughs> State out, right? Um, so I think this is um, Lakers defense uh, about to be exposed tonight, um, specifically. So the Lakers have been playing great defense recently. Um, their numbers against a three-point shot, against jump shooters, they look solid. But I want you to really sit there and look at the, the Lakers' last 10 games. I mean, are there any teams on there that could shoot the ball? You got Cleveland, who's ice cold, like Washington a couple times. I mean, there's just a bunch of teams on there that can't shoot. So the Lakers' defensive numbers against the three-point shot inflated right now. It's not that they've played an easy schedule. They just haven't played any teams that could shoot the ball recently. Um, even last week, Minnesota. Minnesota's not a great jump-shooting team. They're a great team, but they're, they're not, that's not what they do. Um, so the Lakers numbers against a three point shot are, are definitely inflated right now. And this is a Golden State team that the one thing they do well is they don't let you get to the rim. I mean, Draymond and the, and the length they got down there, they don't let you get to the rim. And this is a Lakers offense that's relying on getting to the basket and, and scoring. Um, it's as weird as it sounds. I like how the, the Warriors finally snapped that streak believe they were 0-6 against the spread in, in the six trips to L.A. to play the Lakers. They snapped it. So I like how that's over finally. Um, we know Golden State on the road, most profitable road team in the NBA. Um, I, I think they'd rather – I know that some people – someone said – I think it was Chris on the show this morning said that Golden State would rather be in the 10 spot to play the Lakers in L.A., but I completely disagree. I think they want this game in Golden State, and they want this one – uh, I'm 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 on the Warriors money line and I took the points. Why would they want to play in LA? That's a because Chris said they've been better on the road. But I, I but that's I mean, a, a lot that. of that. A lot of that is like they're been better against the spread on the road. Their actual record might not be quite as dramatic. You know what I'm saying? Right. Well, you said a lot of things there. Um, of great, great points. A lot of great points. There. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going that far. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but I'm going to disagree here. And I'll start with the comment section. The number one reason. What, or let me ask you. What do you think is the number one reason the Warriors have success beating the Lakers? Uh, the number one reason the Warriors have success beating the Lakers. Oh, don't have success. Because they, they're oh. 0-6, right? Yeah. Um, well, no, they were 0-6. That was in L.A. They were uh, they were 0-6. Okay. But as, as a whole, I don't think they have a ton of success against the Lakers. Um, I mean, the, the Warriors don't have much presence. I don't know, actually, because I actually like the way they match up. Um, they they probably they struggle with the fast break, and the Lakers run a lot of those, so that could be something for the Lakers. Here we go, right here. Here's my answer. A D. Anthony Can you even Davis. see, man? He was really nursing that poke die the other night. I don't know. <laughs> Did someone get a vision test on him? The thing about A D, man, I'm gonna tell you, he's been the Laker for what four five years whatever it's been when he first came he gets hurt everybody's oh oh my god and then we're at the point now where we're used to this he's gonna go down he's gonna get right back up he'll be good and ready to go he might go down again in this game he'll get right back up again so i'm not really worried about that but anthony davis is just a matchup problem for the warriors he's been a matchup problem since he played them when he was on the pelicans um like i'm just thinking back now when he was on the pelicans and played the warriors in the playoffs I think that series went – did it go maybe six or, or, or seven games? I don't know. But I, know I, will, I think it went seven. It was one versus eight, and I think they took him to seven, If I right? Is that yeah. the series you're talking about? I think right. so. Yeah, Anthony Davis is just a matchup problem. They don't have anybody who can who, who can stay with them. And um, as long as he comes to play tonight, he can put the Lakers on that, his that's back. That's a big if. That's a big win. if. 
<laughs> I, I'll, I'm willing to put some faith in Anthony Davis um, to get the job done. So that's that's the main reason I think they they don't match up well with the Lakers. I get what you're saying about the perimeter. I do think Steph will be able to do kind of whatever he wants there. But um, another comment, Kevin says, Lakers don't try on Deve on bad teams. They lock up when playing better teams. I can kind of see that. One thing I'll say is I think you get max effort from both teams here tonight. So I think both teams will play solid defense. It's just I don't think there's anything the Warriors can do to stop Anthony Davis. I really don't. Um, and Steph, I mean, you can make the same argument for him. So it just goes down to I like for the past month or two how the Lakers offense has been running. As long as since they started running like sets and like actually having some organization to their offense, they've been one of the top offensive rated teams. And I think as long as they do that, they'll be the better defensive team tonight and they can get the job done at school. Here goes Boofer says, here comes Homer Ski. Lakers are so good. <laughs> <laughs> I like the Lakers. I think they get the job done. I'm willing to put the belt up on this. Uh, there you go. Accepted. <laughs> Accepted. I don't even want uh, the points, bro. I don't want no points. Oh, no that's this easy right here. All right. <laughs> Licking my chops play of the day. Lakers money line, huh? <laughs> no, nah, I, 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 I'm, I'm comfortable in my position here. I'm comfortable. Um, Question here. Let's see. If you're Golden State, do you want to play Lakers or Kings in 9 10 playing? I don't really understand. Yeah, I don't think that's an option, is it? Yeah, I don't really understand that one. I'm trying to get through a couple more comments here. Oh, I guess they, they say if, if, because if Golden State loses, the Lakers would jump the Kings or could potentially jump the Kings. I guess that's what they're saying. So the Kings could drop to the nine. Maybe that's what he means. So maybe there's he's oh, okay. okay. So the okay. point he's saying okay. is if okay. would they lose on purpose to play the Kings. But you know what? The Kings just gave Golden State a, a hell of a series. So I don't know if they're the, they're necessarily like dying to play the Kings. The Kings almost knocked them out. I need a, re a refresher, actually. This this uh the nine and ten, they have to win twice. Yeah, they have to. The ten seed needs to win two road games. Uh, the nine seed gets a home game against the ten first, and then they go on the road and play the the loser of the seven eight or the eight. Uh, yeah, that yes, the seven eight. I'm sorry. So okay. nine ten would play at nine, and then the winner has to win again on the road at the loser of seven eight. So gotcha. if so, the, what this guy is saying, I believe, is. Would the goal, would Golden State lose on purpose so the Lakers jump Sacramento and then the Warriors now play Sacramento in the 9-10 game instead of the Lakers? But it doesn't really make sense because you're going to have to go play the 7-8 after anyway. So, well, I kind of understand. I think, like I was saying earlier. for the Kings on this show. <laughs> <is outrageous. laughs> I, I mean, I said it earlier. I, I would want the Kings or the Pelicans. So potentially, based on what he's saying here, if the Lakers were to win tonight and the Kings are in that ninth seed, the Warriors could go smack the Kings around and then beat up on the Lakers leftovers with the Pelicans versus having to play the Lakers in a playing game. I think that makes sense, but I don't think they'll come out with that mindset. Or Golden State could just win tonight and get the eight seed themselves and let the Kings and Lakers <laughs> battle behind them. How is that not more plausible? Is, you, is you that know, even you possible? Bet, you guys go ahead. Bet your Lakers. Go ahead. <laughs> I want you to do it. I want you guys to do it. Prolific says Laker rent incoming tomorrow. Oh, I'll get to talk to you tomorrow too. We'll get to talk about that, uh, that yeah, championship yeah. belt. So good stuff on this. We'll disagree. And that'll be just fine. That'll be just fine. So it is about that time. We've been on here for 40 minutes, got through majority of the games. We'll move on over to best bets. And before we do that, I do want to shout out, um, like we mentioned, Kyle, he, he does, I mean, you do a baseball show, yeah, no more I'm, college I'm, basketball. Yeah, that's over. So we have, I have a baseball show in at four. Um, but for, for right now, I'm just the host on that. I don't have, I, I don't have time to do two at once. It's just too much. Uh, so for the other shows, I'm just the host and I bring other people who are spending their full time doing it. Um, but yeah, that's at 4 p.m. We do all kinds of stuff tomorrow. I got a, at noon. I'm doing a uh, master's show. I got two golf experts coming on oh, to wow. talk masters. Uh, master's starts on Thursday. So I personally bet all kinds of stuff. But as far as what I 
personally am researching it's NBA, NFL, college football. And then I do baseball once NBA slows down and I have time to do baseball. So that's what I personally do. But I actually have to go prep for this show for our best bets. Right? Where I'm the best bet yeah. part. Yep. All right, cool. So I actually have to dip out. I got I need to get the graphics ready for four. So all right. Let the people know uh what's the best way to get paid. Uh you know what? I'm sticking with Golden State, man. Money line. All right. <laughs> Take the all plus right. money. I'll talk appreciate to you. Appreciate you, pal. Uh always appreciate him taking the time to come on the show. I know it was a little bit uh a little bit much for this slate. And um I'm gonna just say for my best bet, I'll go head to head with Kyle. How about that? I I would love to give you guys something different as far as um, you know, so we're not going against each other, so you guys can make money on both best bets. But I I, I firmly believe Lakers get the job done tonight on the back of Anthony Davis. And like I said, I'm putting my, my championship belt on the line for it with Kyle. So my best bet for the show will go with the Lakers. And I'll do I'll do the money line, just like how he said our bet will be. Um, quick shout out to you guys for your best bets. Joe the Gambler likes the under. And it's not letting me put it on the screen, but I will shout. There we go. Joe the Gambler likes the under 235 and a half in that game. Groovy Caps says first basket in the Bulls game, DeSumo. He's game time decision, but he's plus 700. Jeff likes the Knicks minus three. Siete Gatorse likes the Lakers minus two and a half. Lit picks going with the Bucks money line. Um, JT giving some good information there. Appreciate that. Tasha likes Hawks first quarter plus one and a half, and Lakers first quarter minus a half. Boofer, this could be a good way to play. Like Anthony Davis points plus rebounds. JT going with the Knicks, and let's see <laughs> Wham says Caillou over his points. For you guys who don't know, that is Derek White on the Celtics, and Mike Lewis, or I'm sorry, Mike Lou. Says Bulls. I don't know if it's first quarter, first half. You guys got to be specific, but he likes the Bulls early. So, like I always say, man, appreciate you guys in the chat. A lot of great cappers out there, and we always have a good time while we get through these games. So, best chat in the game. Always let you guys know you're appreciated. Best of luck if you tell. Good luck on all your action. I will be live with Dutch, Wham Bam, and Babano at 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And uh, I'll catch you guys then.